accept his tribes lawfully. Hallelujah. And so I, I salute Pastor Ike and your dear wife. I love you with all my heart. May the Lord bless you. You will keep going higher and higher in the name of Jesus. Let me also appreciate the biological parents, biological mother. Thank you. Such an honor and a blessing. Please celebrate her. Hallelujah. Truly a woman of power and a woman of grace. And then it's my joy and honor to appreciate every vessel of God here represented. I know that there are men and women of God. Oh, I thought it was just mama that came. Let's honor daddy. Let's give him a big, big God bless you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Hallelujah. Thank you. Thank you. Um, appreciate Bishop Jude. God bless you, sir. Such an honor. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Every servant of God here represented. And when, when I sat back there and watched and, uh, and I began to watch the woman of God lead us in worship. Amazing. When I held her hand, part now I mean Midnight Crew, I just told her, I said, you are an amazing, amazing woman of God. I sincerely appreciate her. Let's honor her. Let's give her a great God bless you. Just meeting her for the first time, but she's a phenomenal woman with, with such profound gift. Honestly, she's a gifted woman. And to know that she took the time to come and just honor Pastor Ike, may the Lord bless you and increase you in Jesus' name. The Lord will do us good. Our time is fast spent. We'll just start by way of introduction tonight and then we'll see how far the Lord will help us in the name of Jesus. One prayer point, Lord, open my eyes in the name of Jesus. Go ahead and pray. Open my eyes to see because it is as far as your eyes can see that is given to you. Someone is praying, Father, open my eyes, open thou my eyes that I may behold wondrous things from out of thy law. In the name of Jesus Christ, in the name of Jesus Christ, before we sit, I want to encourage us again. When I stepped in and I saw so many people who have come for this program, um, my heart began to pray sincerely that God would grant us the fortitude to open up our spirits to receive the word that is able to build us. You see, there is no other way believers grow and mature in the things of the kingdom except by the hearing of faith the communication of scripture if and when done effectively backed up by the anointing of the holy spirit sustains the ability to transit individuals from whatever level to whatever level it is the word of god that builds it is the word of god that changes john 1 1 to 3 in the beginning he says was the word and the word was with god and the word was god the bible says the same was in the beginning with god and then he says that through him were all things made and without him that means outside of his influence was not anything made that was made so the maker is the word of god and it is not only the heavens and the earth that the word makes. It makes destinies too. Are we together? The word of God is able to make the version of you that you desire. So that you can transit from where you are. In power and in grace and in glory. So let me encourage you. Please lend me your attention for a few minutes. 
as we discuss the things that pertain unto the kingdom and the Lord grant us understanding in Jesus name please you be seated I have found myself singing a song again and again I think in the last two or three places that I've gone to minister and usually God uses these melodies to engrave in my heart the things that he's doing and speaking per season, per time. I really believe with all my heart that God is bringing men, number one, to deeper levels of spiritual understanding. There is a lot of ignorance in the body of Christ and God by his spirit and by his mercy is coming to us as the logos of the Father, opening us up to the mysteries of the kingdom. Colossians 1 verse 9, Paul was mentoring the church in Colossae and he prayed that they be filled with the knowledge of his will in all wisdom and spiritual understanding. Hallelujah. He says, and that from a child thou hast known the holy scripture that is able to make you wise unto salvation. The only way to draw wisdom that works is through the word of God. Paul was speaking in the book of Acts and he said, I'm Peter now. He said, I commend you to God and to the word of his grace, which is able to build you up and to give you an inheritance among them that is sanctified. The word of God builds up. To build you up means to give you stature and capacity. Luke chapter 2 and verse 52. The Bible says, and Jesus increased in wisdom. He increased in stature and he increased in favor with God and with men. Hallelujah. So the word of God gives us the basis for increase and in accordance to your team and with your team it takes light to walk in dominion authority in this kingdom is light dependent authority in this kingdom is not just intention dependent it's not just desire dependent it is light dependent many people have desires they desire to excel they desire for their lives to be a reflection of the character the power the kingdom and the glory of god many people desire that their lives become an effulgence of the possibilities of the kingdom but dominion in this kingdom is a resultant effect of your comprehending the ways of god light is what translates to dominion hallelujah john chapter 1 and verse 5 the bible says and the light shineth in darkness and the darkness comprehended it not i would always teach that if this room were dark for 10 years because of the absence of electricity the moment electricity comes it would not respect the times of darkness past the light will answer instantly that means a room that were dark for 10 years and a room that were dark for one year and a room that were dark for one week and a room that were dark for one day and a room that were dark for a few hours if you connect them together and switch on the light all of them will answer at the same instant that means in the presence of light the longevity of darkness does not matter Isaiah chapter 60 and verse 1 he says to arise and shine for thy light is come and the glory of the Lord is risen upon you then he says for darkness shall cover the earth to who bohu the Hebrew expression and that great thick darkness upon the face of the people then he says but upon you the glory of the Lord shall arise verse 3 says Gentiles by reason of your illumination will come to your light and their kings to the brightness of your rising we need light and we need knowledge tonight let me just begin 
a series that I'll wrap up tomorrow, The Keys of the Kingdom. Just an introduction for a few minutes and then we'll pray. The Keys of the Kingdom. Matthew chapter 16 and verse 19. Now the way Jesus mentored the disciples was very interesting. The first thing he did was to laboriously go through the spiritual and physical process of calling them together. He went and met fishermen like James and John and he beckoned on them. He said, follow me and I will make you. That is already a lesson for someone that when it has to do with the making of men, you don't follow it. You don't follow an agenda. You follow a person. Follow me and I will make you. If you follow destiny, you will not be made. If you follow anointing, you will not be made. If you follow ministry, you will not be made. The first mandate is follow me when I make you then I will send you the empowerment is when you are sent not when you are called many people have been called but not yet sent and then they send themselves and they become victims of the absence of power and the backing of heaven so he called on all of them and then he began a series of mentorship sessions with them Beginning from what we know theologically speaking to be the Beatitudes. He was teaching them, exposing them to the modus operandi of the kingdom. To help them understand how the kingdom operates. Then he began teaching them that they were light, they were salt. That would need to add value to society. He began to teach them on the character of the kingdom. Then when we get to Matthew chapter 16 and verse 19. Is it projected? Matthew 16 and 19 okay it says and i will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven and whatsoever thou shall bind by reason of the keys that you now have it says it shall be bound and whatsoever you lose to bind means to disallow to lose means to allow that means by reason of the keys, it takes more than desire to allow things and to disallow things. It takes more than a good heart, a sincere and well-meaning motive. You must sustain the spiritual wherewithal, wherewithal that comes by reason of high level spiritual illumination. The average believer, the average believer, I would, I would assume, loves the lord the average church goer the average participant in spiritual activities world over but especially in africa and in our nation we love the lord sincerely our love for god has been tested in the face of so many things and so um we're, we're not in doubt as to the fact that we sincerely love the lord but i think the modus operandi that makes for spiritual maturity and growth most people have not been taught the keys that makes for the excelling of a believer as far as representing the purposes of the kingdom is concerned. So just because you've been around spiritual things for many years does not automatically translate to dominion. Just because you've been around spiritual activities. The Bible says, Proverbs 18 and verse 1. Are we still here? It says, through desire, a man, having separated himself that he seeketh and intermeddled with all wisdom desire initiates the process but it does not in itself impart dominion in fact there is no anointing called dominion dominion is not an impartation dominion is the resultant effect of your thoroughly comprehending the ways of the kingdom that is what culminates to dominion sovereignty power are we blessed so jesus is telling us that he's giving us the keys of the kingdom now there is only one key to the kingdom you have to understand this there are many keys of the kingdom but there is one key to the kingdom the key to the kingdom is not a principle the key to the kingdom is not a modus operandi the key to the kingdom is one person jesus the christ of god he is the key that opens you to that experience of the kingdom so here's how apostle john said it he said this is the record 
that God had given us eternal life, the word zoe, life everlasting. Are we together? He says, but he structured this life such that you have to encounter the son to receive that life. That means it is impossible to have that life outside of your encounter with the son. Are we still together? So the foundation of a believer's journey does not start with church. The foundation of a believer's journey does not start with spirituality. The foundation of a believer's journey does not start with a Bible. The foundation of a believer's journey does not start with prayer. The foundation of a believer's journey does not start with fasting. The foundation of a believer's journey starts with Jesus. Not a principle, a person. Jesus is the key to the kingdom. There is only one key to the kingdom. Paul was speaking to the church in Rome and he says, There is no other name given to men by which we must be saved. There is only one name, there is only one office. The sole administrator of eternal life is the office of the Christ. Are we together now? That means you are not a Christian if you have not passed through that way. Who is a person, not just a road. Jesus said, I as a person, I am the way. And when you follow me, I lead you to reality called the truth that now administers life experience. So the way leads you to the truth. A quality of spiritual truth that brings you into reality. Life. The goal is life. I am come that he may have not just a way. I am come that he may have not just the truth. I am come that he may have life. But the protocol is that you must meet the way that leads you to the truth. And then in experience, you will have life. And life abundant. Are we still here? It's important for believers to know that nothing other than Jesus begins your journey in the kingdom. So that we do not come with all kinds of unscriptural ideas about dominion and power. You will be amazed to know how many believers think that eternal life is a reward for staying long in church. Or eternal life is a reward for being involved in Christian activities. The life of God is only at the instance of your acknowledging the lordship of the christ as savior the one who saves as lord the owner of your life as much as the earth and then as king the government you have chosen to submit under are we together now but then when you now come to the kingdom the next personality you are introduced to in order of priority is the person and the office of the holy spirit Jesus began to speak about the Holy Spirit and this is what he said I have many things to tell you but ye cannot bear them now he says how be it when he the spirit of truth is come that he will guide you into all truth are we Bible students so the Holy Spirit now in partnership with the word begins to culture your understanding his first assignment is to bring you to a point of the experience called re repentance repentance is not just a word for sinners it is the name given to the pathway that transits you to become christ-like in experience repentance is not a one-off thing it is a journey his message was repent for the kingdom another superior ideology is now within your reach repentance involves the renewing of the mind are we together now like Romans chapter 12, I believe from verse 1 and 2. I beseech thee, brethren, he says, by the mercies of God, that ye offer your bodies unto God a living sacrifice, which is um, holy and acceptable. It is your reasonable act of worship. Then verse 2 says, do not be conformed to this world. It comes from the Greek word aeon, the thinking pattern that comes with this system. He says, but be ye transformed. Many of us here had certain levels of elementary science where you teach about the three or four stages in the development of insects. From egg to larva to pupa to adult. That's the word transform. Metamorpho, where you get the word metamorphosis. That you can transit to superior versions of yourself. And that by the renewing of your mind. 
you now allow the ideas of this culture this kingdom you have come into to now begin to superimpose listen carefully to superimpose the prior ideologies you have sustained ideologies that would have come from culture experience your past all kinds of negative things you are not you will never be able to walk truly in dominion if you do not submit your mind to the influence of the light of God's Word the assignment of the light of God's Word is not just to shine in your path but to be able to erode and take away every kind of mentality that has framed your understanding that is inconsistent with the way of the kingdom can I tell you this is about the hardest if I would use that expression the hardest ministry of the Holy Spirit in the life of a believer because it takes a lot of endurance as you participate with the Holy Spirit to transit you ideology after ideology because many of us have become emotionally connected to our ideologies so it is difficult to give up something that you have lived with for 30 years for 20 years for 10 years but then he shows you the excellency of your transition from scripture that the more you open up your heart to sustain the mind of christ the more you allow light to come to you the more you are able to rise and even shine are we together so you have the key to the kingdom jesus then you have the keys of the kingdom there is one key to the kingdom a person jesus but there are many keys of the kingdom they are also called the secrets of the lord or the mysteries of the kingdom matthew 13 and verse 11 jesus was speaking to them and he says for it has been given unto you to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven hallelujah what are the mysteries of the kingdom the principles that help us to command dominion in experience they are called the keys or the mysteries of the kingdom when Job, in the height of Job's predicament, when you study the book of Job, here was a man who was the wealthiest man from the east, and tragedy struck in one day. He lost everything, children, possession, his estate. Everything went down. Then in addition, he was now plagued with a sickness that seemed incurable. So at the height of Job's frustration, he gathered a few friends together in an attempt to help unravel what would have been the basis for his strange predicament. And it was Elihu that spoke by the Spirit in chapter 32 and verse 8. Elihu said, there is a spirit in man, he said, and that the breath of the Almighty is able to make men of understanding. Are we together? When you go to Job chapter 38, Job was frustrated. He was at the height and the peak of his frustration when the Bible says Job summoned God. Now, that is another mystery. How did Job summon God and God came? The mysteries of the kingdom. Think how much we try, in quote, to get God's attention in church. We do all kinds of things and it looks like God is far. And here is a man and the Bible uses a very disturbing statement that Job summoned God and God came to him in a whirlwind and said, who is this man that darkened counsel without knowledge? In other words, you are just speaking, but not on the strength of light. He said, guard yourself as a man, and I will question you. Question one, where were you when I founded the earth? He be, it was a discussion of mysteries. Now, by the time we get to 33 of Job 38, he made a statement. He says, has thou knowest thou the ordinances of heaven? And canst thou establish the dominion thereof on the earth? Very powerful statement. Do you know the... Are we blessed? If I ask all of us now, please write your prayer requests and submit it right now. If I have the privilege of reading our prayer requests, let me guess that most of us will write things that cut across the following. Number one, I desire increase in finances, say. Number two, I have a health condition that seems to be challenging me. Number three, there most likely may be a family problem. Number four, there, more, there may be some demonic problems, some hindrances that stand my way. Number five, I desire a greater level of achievement in career.
live a life as a superstitious Christian, you are guessing and hoping, arbitrarily applying the principles of the kingdom. I think I've said it here one time, how that you call the average believer to stand up here now and simulate a spiritual scenario and ask the person to solve it. That means that person is defending his Christian faith. Act a drama with that person and say, I am sick or I am limited. As someone who has been in church for five years, recommend for me what the Bible says should do over my situation and sit back and be ready to cry as a result of your disappointment. The average believer, even a worker, and respectfully speaking, maybe even a pastor, may be completely at a loss for what to do. Most believers will random pick spiritual principles. Let's pray. Usually that's what they will say. Listen to the content of the prayer and you will know that prayer did not go anywhere, even though there was amen in it. The very structure of the prayer violates how God taught us to pray. Because most believers have not been taught to pray. They pray, but you pray effectively when you are taught. The disciples said, teach us to pray. Their problem was not prayerlessness. Their problem was lack of effective prayer. Are we together? Are you learning something now? Yes. So tell an average believer, I'm not doing well. It looks like there's no favor in my life. Everyone to help me is in a Sabbath. But I do not know why they, are, they, are, they delay, they lag to come and help me. Recommend for me. What is the spiritual pathway designed for me to come out of that predicament? And the average believer will say, well, go and meet a man of God. So we suspect that the answer is somewhere within the boundary of the blood of Jesus, the word of God, prayer, maybe sowing a seed, maybe prophetic declaration, but we really do not know which one is exactly tied to produce that answer. There is largely ignorance as to know what truth is allocated to what. Now, I believe that men can cook now. Men, are we together? Am I right on that? Don't tell lies when in church. If you can't cook, you won't go to hell. Just admit that. Now, but watch this. At least we are safe to use the women. If, what do you love cooking in this region? Pastor Ike, where's, where's, where's his wife? You have to be the one to talk to me now. Um, should swallow? What soup? Banga soup. Okay. Whether you like it or not, just listen to what I'm saying. Now listen, if I ask you to prepare banga soup, the first thing you need to do is to know what ingredients make that soup. Is that true? Or let me use something very generic. If I ask you to prepare, say, swallow and vegetable soup, and I see you carrying beans and cassava, are they wrong? Are they evil? But will they prepare the desired soup? Then if I ask you to apply salt, salt is good, but if you fetch this size of salt to put in a pot, what did you do? That means not every truth has the same, oh dear. In this kingdom, there are stresses and there are emphasis with, with, the, with, the, with the mastery of a chef. You have to know how to combine what truths to be able to produce the results that you desire. So, like salt. Salt is not bad. Salt is not evil. But it can kill when you do certain things with it. It is not only a lie that kills. The truth, if malhandled, can kill. And Satan, knowing that, when he tries to stop you from getting the truth, and he sees that your determination to get the truth is unbending, his next assignment becomes to corrupt the desire for methodical growth. So you just receive truth at random, like several ingredients. Now you are in the kitchen of your destiny, but you do not know to what degree. There are certain ingredients, like vegetables, I've seen people do it. You, in fact, is when the food is almost done, and you just put it on top and close it there. Am I right on that? Now imagine if you want to start something, and the first thing you put a hot pot and you just put vegetables then you add salt then you add whatever it is 
and then five minutes to the end of the cooking you add rice now you see all your ingredients were correct but the combination was wrong this is where spiritual understanding comes in are, are you learning what i'm teaching you now so here's what many believers say i don't know what is wrong with me i can't seem the bible says this i know the blood is needed in my life i know the word is needed in my life i know prayer and fasting has a role to play i know seed sowing has a role to play i know diligence has a role to play i know relationships have a role to play but the ability to combine it methodically to produce a life that is beautiful and gives god glory is where the power of structured mentorship comes in and you see we live in a world of extreme arrogance that even in the midst of blatant failure and lack of results many people will not humble themselves to submit themselves to methodical growth as though it were an insult to their pedigree knowledge does not bring down knowledge increases are we together I as a person, I am very passionate about the things I do not know. When I find ignorance in my life, I become, it becomes my project to eradicate that ignorance as fast as possible and as thorough as possible. Seated here tonight and even following online are men and women who desire to see themselves become expressions of the glory of God careers of power indeed those who become envoys of the power the glory the wisdom the grace of god but listen to me ladies and gentlemen hoping and wishing arbitrarily will only waste our time and remember there is timing in exploits all times are not available to make you a champion it is not every time there is a designated time there are footballers today who may desire to still continue playing active football but because of their age it says he that seeks me early will find me there is timing to the pursuit of wisdom it therefore means that if we desire to walk in dominion practically except if we just call the title for a program just to honor a 2021 edition of a program and round up and go back to our pain recycling our pain again and again through ignorance Ephesians 4 verse 18 having their understanding darkened it says being alienated from the life of God through the ignorance that is in them because of the blindness of their heart and that is the assignment of the God of this world principally is not to curse you principally is not to attack you is to blind your mind your understanding so that you have no access to superior spiritual knowledge but thou O oh lord are a shield for me my glory you lift my head but thou O oh lord and a shield for me my glory the lifter up of my head but thou dear lord had a shield for me my glory you lift my head but thou O oh lord had a shield for me my glory the lifter up of my head this will be someone's song after this conference because you will watch your life move like night and day and you will see that through knowledge your fears are gone fear is largely a product of ignorance fear is proof that there is no dominion in the area of fear hallelujah There is something that if and when you know, it will take away fear in that area permanently and forever. The mysteries of the kingdom, the secrets of the kingdom, the ways of God. These are the secrets that you must surround yourself with like chariots. So, every dimension of 
the expression of God's glory that needs to be captured in your life is principle dependent. There is a modus operandi you must find to access that level of truth. For instance, favor. Is it true that in the dealings of God with men there is a provision for favor? Yes, sir. But how does favor happen? I will just receive favor. That's a joke. You will sit down there encouraging yourself from a well-meaning heart, but you may never find favor. Proverbs 13, 15 gives us the key that produces favor. Good understanding, the Bible says, procure favor. It says, but the way of the transgressor is hard. So the foundation for biblical favor is good understanding. Good understanding in what? You have to understand the law of honor. I was so proud of my dear son and his wife, Pastor Ike, when I saw them standing here to honor the woman of God. I said, that's it. Do you know that just understanding the law of favor, it will open more doors for you than you can. You can earn a living practicing honor. Honor is a stream of income. You can literally, like someone says, I'm in real estate. Another person says, I'm in oil and gas. You can say, I'm a practitioner of honor. It will take a fool to laugh at you. Chances are excellent that tomorrow, if Pastor Ike and his dear wife desires favor from her life, chances are very high that her heart will be opened and gladdened to communicate that benevolence. Why? Because like he defined it rightly, honor is the discerning, the celebrating, and where necessary, the rewarding of men for their uniqueness. It takes discernment, it takes humility, it takes maturity to discern the unique expression of God's grace upon people and then to be lavish and truthful about celebrating it. That's honor. And that it is the key that controls access to a man's heart. Honor will give you what a certificate will not give you. Not to demean it, but it is true. There is a level you get to in your life where most of your results will not depend on competence of professionalism alone. It will depend on your understanding of honor and even relationships. It didn't take competence to be saved. It took relationship. So for instance, the key of honor, two persons can be born again, same day, same time, under the same pastor. Are we together now? And they are exposed to a variety of spiritual truth. One of them may live violating the law of honor for the rest of his life and find out that even though spiritual, even though filled with the Holy Ghost, he will continue to pay the price again and again. How about diligence? Diligence is another law of the kingdom that translates to dominion. The Bible says a diligent hand shall be made fat. Is that true? Yes. Laziness is one quality that both God and Satan will drive you for. If you are lazy, both God and Satan, none of them will need you. Because whoever you choose to serve, you will need to read laziness to be effective serving any of the two. And yet so many people embrace laziness and give all kinds of spiritual excuses and do not know why they are unable to rise, respectfully speaking, from ministry to business, to corporate living, to family. There are people who just, you can see for instance, a man sit with five children wanting to see the glory of God, wanting to walk in dominion, but is completely lazy, hoping that time and chance will evolve its way to bring you out of a life of penury and pain. Diligence is not a desire, it is a law. Are you learning something now? How about the prophetic? There is a provision for the prophetic as a modus operandi of the kingdom in the life of a man. There are heights you can never get to until the prophetic is introduced in your life. The prophetic as taught by scripture and communicated within the boundary of scripture. There are people who are well-meaning. Jesus, your Jesus, walked under a close heaven for 30 years until the prophetic opened his heavens go and read your bible 
just because he was the son of God and he was the word did not automatically open his heavens. He told John, suffer it to be so. It's an ordinance that scripture be fulfilled. After he was dipped in water and it came out, your Bible records and the heavens opened. Now God spoke through that heavens and said, this is my beloved son. In so a man can you can walk under a closed heaven, praying and fasting, but under a closed heaven. Because the opening of heavens is within the office of the prophetic. You can do business under a closed heaven. You can do ministry under a closed heaven. A closed heaven does not mean a wrong motive. It just means a violation to God's ordinances. When Jesus was born, before he was even taken home to rest, he was taken to two strange people in the temple. Simeon the prophet and Anna the prophetess. Two of them had to speak into his life and then they could take him to live his normal life. When he was about to start ministry, he needed to meet that other prophet, Elijah, because Elijah is the spirit that foreruns the day of the Lord. And now John had come in the spirit and the power of Elijah. There are many of you seated here. All it takes... For the dimension of dominion you need to see is one genuine prophetic declaration. Not the one you lift your hand to. No. There are protocols to receiving from the prophetic. It's been abused, but there is. A general declaration is not what I'm talking about. There are keys that provoke the prophetic genuinely. Let me give you one of the keys. When it was time for Isaac to bless his sons, he said, come, go and make me venison, not the one you like, such as my soul delights. I'm not hungry. I want to bless you. It's a law. Now, it has been, people have used it to manipulate and oppress people and, and it's unfortunate. But that does not mean, you don't just stand and hope to receive something. No, no. Prayer is a law that controls many possibilities in this kingdom. Luke 18 and verse 1. He spake a parable to them to the end that men ought always to pray. Once you are a man, the Bible mandates you must pray. God never had to pray because he was God. But when he became a man, he prayed. And now that Jesus went back to heaven as a man, he's still praying at the right hand of the Father. Prayer is for men. Because it's the spiritual system that authorizes heaven to find expression over the affairs of men on legal basis. So when men do not pray, it is not about prayerlessness or not being a Christian. It's that you are not authorizing heaven to superimpose the will of God. Let it be done in earth as it is in heaven. It was a discussion on prayer. Are we together? What do you do when you lose things in your life? Some of you have lost money in business. Some of you have lost relationships. Some of you have lost loved ones. Do you know what to do? Do you understand the mystery of the kingdom to engage? Because restoration is a possibility as revealed from scripture. In fact, the grace for restoration is so powerful that even time can be restored. And I will restore the years. Not just the things. This is a word of hope for someone now who feels my contemporaries have gone 10, 15 years find rest in the economy of God. His manifold wisdom has a way of not only restoring things. If it is your axe head that has fallen, the, the prophetic can make it float back again. If it is your donkey that is missing, oh Saul, there is still a provision that under the influence of God through Samuel, your donkey can go back home. And if it is time that you have lost, God is able to give you in one month, in one year, what is equivalent to 10 years. You see, because God does not exist in time. So he has the power to go into yesterday and go into tomorrow. Men do not have that power except given by the privilege of discernment and the word of knowledge. Otherwise, the moment you are out of that time frame, you are not given the luxury of going back again. But this God who 
is the God of all flesh. He can reach into your 2001 and check for what his word said should happen that did not happen and move it like a chest to your tomorrow and drop it there. Are we blessed? How about your health? What do you do when your health seems to be deteriorating? Do you know what is the spiritual significance of being sick? If you think it's just bodily discomfort, it's more than that. Every sickness is death knocking on your door. Because you see, the law of territory demands that there is a requisite, a threshold level of health that your body must sustain for your spirit to be able to stay. And if your body is broken below that threshold, your spirit will have to live in the process we call death. So every time Satan attempts to afflict you, he's reminding you of his determination to separate your body from your spirit. Because a body has to be prepared for the spirit to inhabit it. A body has thou prepared. So the healing ministry is part of the apostolic and prophetic systems God has put as a principle for administering life and longevity. Are you seeing now? And there are three ways according to scripture. Am I boring you? We'll find somewhere to pray tonight. There are three ways according to scripture to engage that grace for longevity. Number one, the Bible says, I set before you life and death. I set before you blessing and cursing. I advise you, choose life. To choose life means to verbalize it by faith. Knowing that this our world is voice activated. To choose life means to obtain grace to walk in keeping with the, the behavioral patterns that are pro-life. Choose life. Number two, it says, honor your father and your mother in the Lord that your days may be long and it shall be well with you. I respectfully submit to you dear people in Asaba and following online that I can tell you why many young people do not have it well with them because dishonor has become a trend and it has become fashionable in our world the moment you are educated and enlightened we think it is masculinity and maturity to practice dishonor is the reason why it is not well with many many young people surrounded by atmospheres that should provide all kinds of privileges and yet doors remain closed that it may be well with you you don't want to live long in a miserable life you want to live long and also that it is well with you are we together the third key that activates long life is the covenant of service i shall not die but live and declare the works of the lord that means if your life is not actively being part of kingdom come there is no basis for your longevity your longevity is justified by how 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 you, the participatory role that you have to play as far as kingdom come is concerned. That means my service in the house of God is my immunity against untimely death. I can prolong my life by engaging in service with understanding. Oh, this is powerful. I will not be afraid of ten thousands of people that set themselves against me round about I lay me down and I slept I wait for the Lord sustain me but thou O oh Lord had a shield for me my glory you lift my head But thou, O oh Lord, art a shield for me, my glory, the lifter up of my head. The anointing of the Holy Spirit has laws. People do not just become anointed. It takes more than the laying on of hands. It takes more than pouring oil. Oil can come on you and just come as an extract from plants and not provide anything. Oil does not anoint, except it is anointed by an anointed vessel. God does not store his anointing in oil. He stores it in men. 
it is by the privilege of operating scripture that those men now hold the oil it is that contact that transfers it there listen many of us desire to walk in superior dimensions of the anointing from i have found david my servant and with my holy oil have i anointed him is that true and then he now begins to say all the things that he does by the anointing isaiah 61 the messianic prophecy the spirit of the lord is upon me because the lord hath anointed me to preach glad tidings to the meek he had sent me to bind up the brokenhearted to deliver the ones in prison and so on and so forth it is by the anointing and i believe that in this conference there are many of you who have come with your hearts hungry and your hearts open there are many of you your families are depending on these graces there are many of you your jobs are depending on these graces i want you to open your heart because this is what it takes to reign in life there are many who are in need of wisdom wisdom is powerful the bible says get wisdom it says get understanding it says wisdom is the principal thing therefore in all you're getting it says get wisdom and then get understanding in all you're getting exalt her and she shall promote you that she shall put an ornament of glory upon your head when thou dost embrace her he said does not wisdom cry wisdom personified speaking saying by me kings reign and princes decree justice he says with me are riches wealth and honor yea durable riches and righteousness it was on account of the wisdom of god upon the life of job in chapter 29 job said all that i remember in the days of my youth when the candle of the lord was upon my head and when by his light you see there were two candles the one on his head and the one directing his path illumination and direction and it produced a man of exploit someone shout wisdom please shout it again say wisdom we need to access the wisdom of god there is a relationship between wisdom and mighty works wisdom and results wisdom and results i will give you a mouthpiece and a wisdom that no man will your enemies will not be able to gain say nor resist when they saw the exploits of jesus they were astonished and they said what wisdom is this how about financial prosperity there are many of us that need to walk in financial dominion we desire to do it for the sake of his majesty we desire to do it for the sake of our upkeep god is not against your excelling in life whilst we do not love and seek him because of things but he has so graciously provided it in his dealings with men that in seeking him we are not left hungry in seeking him we find every other thing that supports our seeking him and so here's how it puts it it says i wish above all things that he prosper and then be in health but beware let it be even as thy soul prosper God is not against our being blessed. In fact, God hates empty-handedness to the point that he supplied that grace for favor to be a cure for empty-handedness. Exodus chapter 3 and verse 21. We'll find somewhere to pray. We're discussing the matters that make for dominion. And I will give these people favor in the sight of the Egyptians. And it shall come to pass that when ye go, ye shall not go empty emptiness has an explanation it is proof that the favor of god is not on your life the proof of favor is not money that is the proof of value the proof of favor is access to the hearts of men there are things money cannot do but there is what the heart of a king can do oh nehemiah when you want to build the temple the, the walls of jerusalem you will need more than tools you need the king's permission at that point you need more than money you need favor and in the name of jesus i believe with all my heart that on the strength of this knowledge someone here coming to church tonight you are returning back full of the marvelous favor of god and it will begin to speak instantly in your life how about faith faith is a law the bible four times in scripture says the just shall live by faith the just shall live.
by faith. And then it says that this faith comes by two levels of hearing. The hearing that brings awareness and the hearing that brings understanding. The just shall live by faith. So if you do not build your faith, there are many things you would not be able to get. You want to see God as a rewarder, you need faith. Hebrews 11 and verse 6. For he that cometh unto God, unto him must believe. First that God exists, he is. And then number two, that on account of your faith, he has now become for you the rewarder of them that diligently seek him. All of these principles that I shared with you touching across different areas. These are the truths. They are called the keys of the kingdom. When you say you are walking in dominion, it doesn't just mean hands were laid on you. It means that through the discipline of knowledge, taking advantage of the engracing of the spirit, alongside a, a, a heart of discipline, you have put together the knowledge, the tools that causes for your excelling in life. It is on the strength of that that you can move through darkness. No matter how expensive your car is, when you are driving in the night, you are helplessly at the mercy of not the material strength, not the color of the car, but the level of light. Your headlight is what bails you out in the night. You can afford to be careless in the day, but the moment you are driving in the night, no matter what kind of car you have, it is not the color of the car that will bail you out. It is not even the designers of the car. It is a level of illumination. And there are cars that have up to three or four levels of light. There are some, the moment it is snow, like when you, when you go to the, the you know, parts of, um, you know, the, 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 the Caribbeans and America and the rest, and once it is snowing, UK, there are, there are, you need cars that have certain levels of piercing illumination. To pierce through the darkness. Asaba, I have come tonight to charge you. Number one, that there is work to do. There is so much we need to know and to learn. If it is dominion that we need to walk in. Admiring those God is using is wonderful. But every time he sends a word to Jacob, Isaiah 9, 8, it is because he desires that that word gets to Israel. The days of superstar Christianity has come to an end. It is not just one man celebrity. God is looking for men and women who can open up their heart and pour into people who are interested in learning. The Bible says that in the latter times, men will not endure sound doctrine. It takes endurance. Most believers are not willing to sit down and learn. Africa sadly has an expression of superstitious Christianity. Just because of spirituality, we want and hope that things will just manufacture themselves into breakthrough. It doesn't last that way. When you rise up through the dignity of scripture, it must be by revelation. It says, he that strives for mastery, he is not crowned unless and except he strives lawfully you must be able to defend your result by the dexterity of your spiritual knowledge so when people doubt your result let the opening of your lips be a defense to what god is doing in your life that it is true people can see that even though it is the grace of god like paul said he said but this grace was not showered on me in that i labored more than you all the labor of the word the labor of prayer the labor in doctrine so that you now become like a spiritual edifice and you get to a point where God can give you the keys of nations. He can trust you. Authority over nations. That was the reward for faithful stewards. According to Matthew 25, when you read the parable of the talents, he gave unto one five, two, and one, and then he left them, and two were diligent. One through his, he buried his talent. You bury seeds, not talent. But now he buried his talent. And when the master came, rebuking him, he collected his talent and gave to the other one. And you will see one of the synoptic accounts that the reward for those talents was authority 
over greater kingdoms can i tell you our ranking in the spirit depends on many things number one the election of grace number two our diligence as far as spiritual growth is concerned number three our access to genuine and superior dimensions of the anointing we are going to pray tonight if you came here tonight to be challenged to be provoked to find a pathway that leads you to true dominion then this is it that i've presented to you by grace even jesus did not stumble into dominion it took him 30 years from age 12 or 18 years from age 12 to age 18 it took jesus that long to be built to be mentored to be established in righteousness and by age 30 he was ready and in three years under the influence of superior knowledge he finished his assignment three and a half years he subdued principalities and powers three and a half years he brought satan down three and a half years he purchased for us redemption today we are glad by reason of what he has done please listen to me it is not the sickness in your body i know it is inconveniencing but the most superior part of the kingdom is that more than just receiving a prayer for that sickness you need high level spiritual illumination in addition to your passion for the things of god in addition for your to your drive that it takes more than a good heart who did i trouble that danger is following me no provided you are in this side of god's kingdom satan will attack anyone and anything that has potential of representing god he does not have to wait for your decision if satan can kill babies dear adults you are too old if satan can kill babies without giving them a chance to even declare whether they will be used by god or not he did not give moses and his contemporaries jesus and his contemporaries a chance he will not spare anyone if given the room but i came here like gideon to sound the shofar and the bible says gideon under the inspiration of the holy spirit he sounded a shofar and thirty-two thousand people responded to that shofar are we ready to pray please stand on your feet stand on your feet if you can please By the privilege of God's grace, I have seen what God is able to do when vessels yield themselves and their all to Him. Please let me have your attention. I have seen what God is able to do when vessels pay attention and work in keeping with the modus operandi of the kingdom. There are no limits and there are no boundaries as far as the excelling of the believer is concerned. Do not allow your life, listen carefully please, do not allow your life to just come and be a witness in this conference. I came, I saw, I enjoyed, I will wait next year. You must be angry with the determination of one who is tired of where he is and to make up your mind that everything that makes for my walking in dominion, everything, the knowledge of the mysteries of the kingdom, I will embrace with all my heart but let me a minute or two I believe that before we pray there are people here who do not need the keys of the kingdom because you do not even have the key to the kingdom you have not met Jesus you have met church you have met pastors you have met prayer you have met Bible study you have met fasting but more importantly Jesus you have not met him there are people here who are saying apostle hearing you speak I cannot deny that the Holy Spirit has been convicting me and telling me that it's time to have a new beginning with Jesus. For some of you, at one point or the other, you handed your life to Jesus, but as it is right now, you know that if it depends on you, many people's destinies will go crashing because everything has gone haywire in your life. I have just two minutes for you. I'm going to make a very sincere altar call from the depth of my heart. And if you belong to any of these two categories, you're saying, I truly want to hand over everything in this night. 
I'm going to count one to five and I want you to run like there's fire on the mountain and come and stand here as I pray with you. If you're still thinking about it, you can sit on your seat. It's not compulsory, but run. I begin my counting now. One. Take over. Take over. I have come to the end of myself. Take over. Jehovah. I have touched the end of myself. Hallelujah, hallelujah, I have come to the end of myself. Hallelujah, hallelujah, I have come to the end of my... Keep coming. Take over, take over, I have come. salute every one of you if you're still coming please join them very quickly i want to pray now perhaps you're seated and you're saying apostle i want to come but i'm not sure if i'm saved or not join them if you're not sure there is such a spiritual reality called the assurance of salvation where your fears are gone once and for all that you're not only saved but you know that you are saved that if jesus comes today with joy and gladness i am heaven bound Please look at me. There are so many of you who are here and we thank God for this harvest tonight. But hear me. You must be sure and you must recognize that just coming to the front and reciting a prayer after a man of God is not what saves you. It's the sincerity of your heart with the heart man believes. You can believe with the emotions. You can just have an emotional feeling. But I beckon on you by the message of God that you make this decision true. Some of you might be crying. There's no need being ashamed of your tears. You are standing before Jesus. He wants to be Alpha so he can be Omega. He cannot be Omega over a life he's not Alpha over. He's only Omega. He sees you to the end if you give him room to begin with you. Young and old, many of you have come from several walks of life. And I want to lead you to Jesus sincerely and let it be from the depth of your heart may i request therefore that you lift your right hand please lift it high above your head and i want you to say this after me jesus is here for he says where two or three are gathered in his name that he is there in their midst so we know that he's here say after me lord jesus tonight i have heard your word i come before you just as i am unable to help myself but this night I believe that you died for me I believe that you were buried I believe that you rose again for my justification I believe that you defeated sin Satan hell and the grave and give me victory right now i confess you as my savior as my lord and as my king i declare that i have eternal life into my spirit from tonight i am a child of god i go forward ever and backward never Amen. Amen. Keep your hands lifted. Father, thank you for these ones who have come responding to the call. No man can come to you except you draw them. The Bible says, blessed is any man that he causes to approach him. These ones have come making their declarations. And based on the authority of scripture, I declare your sins forgiven. In the name of Jesus, I declare that you are recipients of the life of God. The power of sin, Satan, hell, and the grave is broken over your life i commend you to the ministry of the word and even of the holy spirit i pray that you'll be established and grounded in righteousness in the name of jesus you'll go forward ever 
and backward never in jesus name someone help me what's the direction okay now here's what i want you to do for me please all of you you are going to move to my left which is your right from where you're standing there'll be a few counselors who will have your details very very fast you'll just collect it listen to the instructions that they give you and then you'll be back to join us and the service praise god let's celebrate them as they go asaba is that the best you can do for a harvest I'll be speaking over your life. Now we can pray while we allow them. Just five minutes and I'm done. Prayer point number one. I'd like you to cry from the depth of your heart. The prayer that Jesus prayed in John 17 and verse 3. And this is life eternal. That they may know you the one through God. And Jesus whom thou hast sent. You're going to pray and say, Lord, I desire to know you more. This is a desire from the depth of my heart. Lift your voice and pray. Go ahead. Are you praying? Please pray. Everywhere, inside and outside. Counselors, let's make it very fast with them. Go ahead and pray. We desire to know you. We desire to know you. Let the wise man not glory in his wisdom. Let the strong not glory in his might. Let the rich man not glory in his riches. But let him that glory and glory in this, that he understandeth and knoweth me. Are we praying? Grant me the desire to know you, to know your word, to know your presence. I cry for intimacy. By the power of the Holy Spirit, I desire to know you. For in the knowledge of you is the knowledge of me. Until I know you, I cannot know myself. Until I know who you are, I cannot know who I am and who I can be. The Bible says, now are we the sons of God. And it does not yet appear what we shall be like. Yeshua. Yeshua. illumination that empowers me to walk in dominion lift your voice and pray high level spiritual illumination are you a man of God are you a businessman the Bible says the light shineth in darkness and the darkness comprehended it not lift your voice and pray high level spiritual illumination he said I went up and that by revelation pray I desire your word even more than my necessary food. Pray, tired of spiritual ignorance, tired of spiritual amateurism. I decree in the name of Jesus, I am ready to press to mastery. A level of spiritual competence accurate knowledge of the mysteries of the kingdom someone is praying hallelujah, hallelujah. hallelujah. last prayer point and we're done for tonight that the grace that needs to come upon your life and lift you to a higher frequency of operation in the spirit that men looked at Saul and said is when has he become a prophet is he also one of the prophets you are going to pray 
Lord, an encounter with your fire and power that is able to lift me, whether in ministry, whether in business, the grace and the power that makes me an effective witness, an effective validator of all that Jesus has said and done. Lift your voice and pray. That men will not only hear the gospel through me, they will see the workings of his hand. Are you praying? The grace that will make my giftings available and visible. Hallelujah. Now please listen. Our time is gone. We may not have the time to pray for the sick and pray for your requests. But let me, let me request everyone three things very quickly. Number one, please ensure that you invite everyone across Asaba. Let them know that Jesus 